We thank God for the ministry of music. And we thank God for the ability that we've given by the Spirit to praise our Lord. Sunday school today at 11.15 in there, Love, the Bible, and Homosexual Practices, Part 2, what Jesus has to say about all this and the Old Testament. Remember that. The Word of God. This is the text for today. It's Romans 8, 31 through 39. Last week, we dealt with 30, 26 through 30, <clears throat> rather, actually, 28 through 30. And we know that this passage, this 31 through 39, you might call it a, a passage of victory, a song of celebration. Okay, think celebration. And think of the context. For chapters 5 through this moment have talked about the work of God in bringing us to himself. It has talked about the wonder of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that we can do the law. It has talked about the golden chain of salvation. If you're called by God, if you're foreknown by God and called by God, you're going to be glorified. No question. This is the triumph of the Christian faith. So this is a victory song. And uh, <clears throat> the song has two sections and therefore two points. Verse 31 through 34 constitute one where the passage is speaking of, of that moment of justice, final judgment. And then you have verses 35 through 39, which is a, a section where we see the love of Christ in full view and the picture of victory comes out in, in, in great and brilliant colors. So these are the two sections, therefore two points. The focus point of the passage is this. Verse <clears throat> it's down <clears throat> Verse 31b, if God is for us, who can be against us? Well, the answer is nobody's against us because God's for us. But I want to focus on these words. God is for us. God is for us. Those are the words we're going to look at today, that, that phrase. That's the main point. And we're going to talk about it and explain it. God is for us. What does that mean? Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> would you help us? Some of us have written letters to the editor, <clears throat> and instead of the letters being received as opinion and handled properly through response and gracious response, attack comes. And this is because of great evil in our culture. We know, Lord, <clears throat> that this is nothing less than a, a, the influence of Marxist-Leninist thinking in this culture. It's evil. We may have come from weeks that have been very, very hard. In the midst of this, it is difficult, but yet, <clears throat> would you impress upon our souls these words and blazon them upon us, God is for us, God is for us. Teach us what that means, in the name of Jesus, amen. Have you ever had this happen? Here's the incident. I uh, <clears throat> remember this when I worked in Nova Scotia. This happened in a high rise where I worked. And we do have high rises in Nova Scotia, all three stories. And the mud and the sticks you can hardly see. We, I have it happen in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and probably in other areas that I can't remember. 
at hospital, when you go to visit somebody at Abbott Northwestern. Here's the picture. Door opens, I get in elevator. I'm the only person. I stand near the back and I relax. Door opens on next floor. A great horde of people rush in and press you to the back. Ever had that happen? And you're saying, what happened? It's called flooding. The door opens, people come in. And then when it comes to your floor, what do you have to do? Uh, excuse me, pardon, pardon me. Get to the front, stick your arm out so you catch the little lever, bong, and it stays open. So that's called flooding, and it happens to us. This past week, you turned from your devotions in the morning, got outside, and all of a sudden, questions rushed into your head. The life seemed to run in at you. Ever have that happen when you go to work, when you go to school, when you get up and face children? That's your job. That's a big job. When you get up and you face the world, period. Did you ever have that happen? The door is open on Monday morning. And Tuesday. By the way, that's called rushing when it opens. You see that? I'm not coughing or anything. It is rushing into your life like a stream. These kind of thoughts may appear. Listen to this. I'm not a very strong believer. I don't have good friends. I'm not sure I can make it in the world. I'm not as strong as I used to be. I'm not as good looking as that person. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I want, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. And all of a sudden, you've turned from devotions, you've got this sense of God, and the world rushes in, doors open Monday morning, and you are inundated. Ever been there? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you do. You know that. The devotions fade and other phrases take hold, and you wonder, where is God? Well, <clears throat> today, in the face of turmoil, think about it. We're heading into this election period. Aren't you yet tired of the ads? I mean, I don't know. I know for whom I'm going to vote, and I can't. Oh, I tell you, I want to be a person to obey the law. Yeah, I can't tell you for whom to vote, but I can tell you, I can tell you for whom I'm voting. <laughs> I'm not voting for a Marxist, I'll tell you that. Does that give you any, any idea? <gasps> what a terrible thing to say. Well, it's true. And it's time the church say to itself, enough of pandering and get on with what's true. We're not government agencies, we're churches. In the name of Jesus, enough. Anyway, that's just a little commercial. The world is pressing in. The worst economy since the Great Depression. You've heard it all, and it's true. Laws and rights, laws made rights stolen left and right. Lying politicians, liars. If you saw the most recent debate, you saw the president tell a big whopper, didn't you, to the American people. And the American people, I hope, are not going to shrug these things off. I hope they'll just say, no, I'm not going to go along with lying. So the world presses in, doesn't it? It comes in on you. It's hard. But I want us to have today upon us this phrase, God is for us. No other name, just that. God is for us. God. What does it mean to say God is for us? What does it mean? Well, let's look to the text. The Bible says this. What do these words mean? God is for us. Here are two points, never forget them. No accusation will stick. That's the first point. No accusation will stick. Think of this, the devil, the world, the flesh, it's like a dart game. Picture your heart as a dart board and the devil throwing the darts. Bang, bang, bang. Listen to what the word of God says. 
What shall we they then say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up, himself up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn Christ Jesus as the one who died? More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. We are in a dartboard situation. I want to let you know we are in a dartboard situation right now. Lying going on, the economy a mess. What is there for our young people, we say? There's plenty. There's plenty of hope. But it, rely, it, it lies completely in this. God is with his people. God. Look at the text. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, what's he talking about? He did not spare his own son, but gave, himself, gave him up for us all. All the believers, Jew and Gentile, all of them, those who come to Christ, he didn't spare his own son. His son went to the cross. That's true. And there are liars in the church who are saying the opposite. But Jesus went to the cross and he died. The people like you and me, you out there who trust in Christ, you know about what I'm speaking. We're sinners. The presence of sin is still with us, but the power and the penalty is being paid for by Christ. We've talked about that before. Jesus died in my place. Believer, you can say that. And he will certainly give us what we need. Since the greatest has been given, the other will follow. Anything that we need to sustain us in this life so that we may never turn from Jesus that will be provided for us. Isn't that wonderful news? He who did not spare his own son but gave himself up, <clears throat> gave him up for us all, how will he not also <clears throat> with him graciously give us all things? Panta, all things, what does it mean? The things that we need to be sustain us through life. That's what it means. And he's good and he gives us that. Continue on. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Believers, who will bring any charge against you? No accusation will stick. On the day of judgment, you will know this, that no accusation will stick because why? God justifies. What does that mean? By faith, the Father transfers the righteousness of Christ from the bank account of heaven to your bank account because you don't have any and I don't have any. And by faith we have received this wonderful declaration from the Father. You are righteous. Not on the basis of anything you've done, but on the basis of Christ's work on the cross. So he declares us righteous. And grants us the righteousness of Christ. And that is God's justification. It is God who justifies who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised. He died on the cross, and he rose up from the dead. He died and rose. And guess what? He's interceding now for the saints. Isn't that wonderful? He is on our side. He is with us through life. Therefore, let's recap. What is this saying? God is for us. What do you mean? No accusation will stick on the day of final judgment. No accusation will stick. None. Because of what Jesus did. Think of the dartboard. The devil is hurling the darts. And watch them bounce off one by one by one by one by one. Why? Because of what Christ did. And that should encourage us. When people are hating you because you believe in that which is true, remember, God is for you. I don't care whether you're Gentile or Jew, if you've come to Christ, if you have received Jesus, you can say this with all confidence. God is with us. 
God will never fail us. He will never forsake us. False accounts have been said about you this week. False things. Perhaps people have called you on the phone and have just attacked you and called you all sorts of names. Perhaps you've, people at school have said things to you that aren't true. Oh, you're just a hate monger. Oh, you're this, you're that. And you feel, oh, goodness, how can I keep this up? Know this. God is for you. Take what you're facing right now, the hatred that you're facing right now from a world system that is just opposed. Take that right now and put it against this truth. Put it alongside this truth. When final judgment comes, beloved, know this. No dart will stick. The enemy can throw what he likes and it will not stick. And you will enter into glory because of what Christ did on the cross. And that's a day of joy. Notice, as you place your greatest conflict alongside this truth, how that conflict shrinks. And notice how your confidence grows in Christ. Notice. Here's the first point again. What do these words mean? God is for us. No accusation will stick. Think of the dartboard. No matter what you're facing right now because of truth, because of the work of Christ, know this. God is with you. What does that mean? On the day of judgment, no accusation will stick against you because of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? That should shrink all of the hatred from the world, the flesh, and the devil directed against you. No accusation will stick. Think of the dartboard. It won't. That's one thing we can say concerning. What does it mean that God is with us? Think of the dartboard. No accusation will stick. Nope. Down. On the day of final judgment, you will stand because of Christ, not because of your own works. And that goes for all, Jew and Gentile. All who will flee to Christ will find him. The second thing we can say, God is for us. What else? Listen to this, verses 35 through 39, part two. The point is this. Number one, no, no accusation will stick. What's the second one? No assault will win. No assault will win. No, sir. No attack will win. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, that is this, this, Tribulation, the great trouble, the great press that comes from evil upon the believer. Or distress. What's happening around me? What's going on? What's going on? The pressure is great. Or persecution. You're called out. Your loved ones are called out of their schooling and they're executed by Boko Haram. What do you do then? You trust in God. You don't hate your enemy. You love them. You want them to become Christians. There it is, persecution or famine. You know, Christians face famine. They face distress. They don't have enough food. But they trust in Jesus who gives them what they need unto eternity. I've seen it. Some of you here have seen it too, perhaps. You see it in the face of the persecuted church. No fearsome en enemy can attack and take her faith. Danger or sword or nakedness. Yes, Christians face these things. Paul did, as it is written, this is from Psalm 44, dealing with the righteous, for your sake we're being killed all day long, we regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. We are regarded by this world system, flesh and devil, as sheep to be slaughtered. Think about it. No, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. That means it's not just victory, it's victory, victory, Victory in Christ. Don't you just love that old hymn? Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Yeah. No, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Notice the love of Jesus. For I am sure, or if you have the King James, for I am persuaded. Note. That neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, Angels, likely bad ones, 
and rulers, bad ones. Those who lie to you. Those who steal your rights. Those who want to run roughshod over you. The liars. Those in culture. There are aspects of the church boldly standing up. This is a church that has it together. In the truth of Jesus. And they're standing up and saying, no. Angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come. This covers it all. Nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. No assault of the devil, of the world, or the flesh will be able to win the war. Oh, you may lose a battle here and there, but you are not going, Christian, to lose the war. Why? Because of what Jesus did. No assault will win. Christians have had to make some very, very difficult decisions. Remember the story of the three little pigs. I suppose today it's the three little androids. But I remember growing up, it was the three little pigs. Anyone ever read the three little pigs? <laughs> Wasn't that a great story? Two of us. We, I love when I was, when I was, we had it in French. We had it in school. We had it en français. Yeah, we did. Don't know what it said, but it was good. <laughs> three little pigs. Here comes the wolf. He deals with the straw house. Does it stand? Nope. He deals with the stick house. Does it stand? No. And then he deals with the brick house. Does it stand? Yeah. And why? Because it is built strongly with brick and mortar. All of these things, all tribulations, persecutions, famines, oppositions, and interladen in here, interspersed in here, you have, where you have the love of Christ. You have conquering going on. More than, more than, more than love of Christ. The brick and mortar of the Christian life is the love of Christ. The brick and mortar of the Christian life that causes us to stand is Jesus. Not self. Uh -uh. We will not finally reject Jesus. That's what it means. Not because of the work of Christ. Many in the, in the field under persecution have felt the attack of the enemy. Story after story, account after account of what? People who have had to watch loved ones die. The oppressor comes and says, recant Jesus or die. And the family members stand there and say, don't recant Jesus. That is what the text is talking about. No matter how firm, no matter how wicked the attack, we will prevail by the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God. We will finally not reject Jesus. Notice what the text says. Every possible trouble cannot win the day. If you are now in the position where you are thinking, all is going on, all that is going on around me is really bringing into question whether God even exists. Christians say those things, you know. We do. And yet today I bring to you this phrase, God is for us. The love of Christ is so powerful, no matter what wolf in this world system in this culture wants to blow it down, he won't be able to do it. Why? Because of Jesus. The brick and mortar of the Christian life is the love of God, is the love of Christ. Nothing can destroy. In the final analysis, we will see Jesus if we truly love him and serve him. His, the brick and mortar is love. His love for his people. We're not going to lose the war. We may see a battle here and there go down, but we're not going to lose the war. We will win by Christ alone. The devil is probably saying to all of us here today something like this. You're a loser. You've lost. Lying will win. 
Hatred will win. You have done nothing. And the Holy Spirit today is telling you this and blazing on your soul. Hear this. The Holy Spirit is with you. God is with you. Christ is with you. These are our warriors. These are the ones who go before us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are, we are part of the people of God. He's with us even to the end. Even when things get tough. And I want you to say, in the name of Christ, whenever the devil says to you, you're no good, you're not going to win, you're a loser. You will say, I may be all of that, but not Christ. He, by the Holy Spirit, indwells me. The victory is sure. You can pass all the laws you want and steal my physical rights. You can do whatever you want, but this truth is still the truth. And you're going to have to stop me from saying it. And I can go confidently because of what Jesus has done. Only. I have no strength in myself. Whatever happened to the church, mighty, where is it? Oh, it's here and there. You see signs. All we see are acquiescence in many places. Acquiescence, agreeing, agreeing, agreeing. Prattling back government words. We don't do that. We speak the gospel. My king is Jesus. My life is Christ. You can take what you want, but you can never take Jesus from his people. Count on it. God is with us. That's all we need to say today. What does it mean to say that God is for us? There's no accusation will stick. No assault will win. No accusation, no assault. Think the dartboard. And when you think about assault, think about every war you can imagine from all over the culture attacking you, but think of the brick wall between you and that. Think of the brick wall and the mortar of Christ's love for you, believer. Think of it. The dartboard and the brick wall. If you forget everything else, don't forget that. And it's all rooted in Christ, isn't it? Think about it. Think about it. No matter what is going on. Monday is coming. The elevator door is going to open. What are you going to say when the crowd runs in? God is for us. Perhaps today the Holy Spirit has said to you, you don't know Jesus. You don't know Christ. And perhaps the still small voice is saying this, in order to know Christ, there must be repentance. There must be trust in Jesus who died on the cross and rose up from the dead. Oh yes, and is interceding for his people right now. Paul said that. Perhaps the Holy Spirit is saying this to you now. I beg, beloved. Oh, God, open hearts to believe. This is a fearsome time. Judgment final will come. If you think judgment is, is at the hand of some leftist government, forget that. It's at the hands of God. Flee to Christ today. Flee to him. Repent and trust in Jesus. Turn from one's sins. One sin can take you to hell. Just one, one little lie can take you to hell. And pray for the liars. Pray for those. I pray for the president, the vice president, the cabinet. People are here who know that, that we do together. Why? Because we want them to be saved. We do. We pray for those who, in, who not only in government, but in the church, who are in pulpits who don't know Jesus. We pray that they be saved. And we examine ourselves to see that we're in the faith. Because judgment is coming and it's a fearful time and if you're not ready, you will never see eternal life. So flee to Christ. Repent. Turn from sin and trust in Jesus. We are done for the day.